Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Dinesh Raja and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at aesthetic premolar restoration. So to give a small brief history, this is a patient that came in with throbbing pain in relation to the 1-4. From the looks of it, it looked like a very small enamel caries. You can see on the distal surface of the 1-4. But this stood had tender on percussion. So I was expecting a deep caries, but from the look of it, it looks like it might, it might not be very deep. Although we've been doing caries excavation for years, sometimes caries like this do surprise us. Like look at that, you can already see how deep the caries is going to be. I continued my caries removal using a long shanked round diamond burr. As I always say, long shank is because I want to have much more better vision. Using a microscope, you get to see a lot. So that is why it's preferable to use a long shank. I also use a lot of scalers in my caries removal, not to remove caries, of course, just to remove any food lodgement or any uh, unsupported enamels. Then I'm going to use a needle burr like this to just remove the pit and fissure caries. As we are already going to fill up the whole tooth, let's just use the opportunity to remove some more caries that is needed to. And definitely break the contact with the adjacent tooth so that your composite sits in a more cleansable position so that it's easier for the patient to maintain it. For this patient, I've recently done the 1.5 distal and the 1.6 mesial. And I was expecting her to have pain in relation to that two teeth because it was some deep caries. But luckily for me, it was actually this one for that was having pain on percussion. And as usual, I'm gonna total etch the tooth as I'm using a fourth generation bonding agent. Uh, it is better to total etch and remove any dentinal debris. So the first step was priming. The second step is adhesive. For the adhesive, I will also use a new micro brush to remove any uh, pooling adhesives. See, I'm just wicking it away and then like here. So for this case, I was considering using my normal saddle matrix or any other sectional matrix, but nothing seems to fit perfectly as the one file is slightly rotated. So I chose to use a clear matrix instead. This is me wedging the matrix so you can see it is leak proof in a while you will see the there's blood can you see but no blood is seeping through because the wedge is holding it so tight there you can see me just playing with the plastic filling instrument to check if there's any leak so i'm going to use a teflon to just adapt the clear matrix well to the enamel see on both buckle and the lingual side so a quick tip is to wet your plastic filling instrument so that you can adapt the teflon well as this will help the teflon not stick to your tooth. Before we start, I'm going to place a bit of flowable to make the, the margin leak proof. And for this case, I'm going to just build the palatal half of the distal wall. See? I'm adapting it well, but only the palatal half and I'm going to use my plastic filling instrument to adapt the matrix well so that I don't have any excess and I'm going to ask my DSA to cure. After that, I'm going to build the buckle half of the premolar. But for this, after adapting well, removing any excess and holding I felt like the matrix is not tight enough, so I'm going to use another instrument like I'm showing in this video to pull it towards the distal against the one file so that I have a better adapted margin. So at this point, you can choose to remove your matrix or you can continue just building your whole teeth, which I decided to continue building. So I'm placing a dentinal shade here, which is OA2 from Tokuyama Palfic LX5. Okay, most of my enamel shade was A1 from Tokuyama as well. So you can see I'm just adapting it using a brush with stick resin and a micro brush to just adapt it and build my buckle cusps. 
see so take your time adapting composite as it's easier to adapt uncured composite than to actually trim cured composite keep that in mind same way for the parallel cusp just take your time pack it in nicely and use a brush with stick resin and if you want you can use a micro brush if you don't you can definitely just use a brush a silicone brush or anything you find and always use a sharp instrument to emphasize the groove the grooves like i'm doing right now this is the actual speed i work in but usually most of my videos are sped up so that it can accommodate more of the feeling lah. if i have to do a long video it's going to take 30 minutes at least one more thing I usually just put flowable for the triangular fossa. This is because sometimes I'm lazy to trim a lot. Because when you use packable composite, you have to trim a lot. Lah. See, I'm just going to remove everything. And I'm going to use a yellow grid diamond burr to just remove any excess. The great thing about the yellow grid diamond burr is it takes a lot of force applied with the burr to cut enamel. So... When you're touching just gently like this, it's only going to reduce the composite instead of damaging the adjacent tooth. So when you're using a microscope like this, the advantage is you get to see more than what usually you will see with the naked eye. So you can actually see that the buckle margin is not rounded. So I'm going to use a burr. But even with the burr, I'm not getting a very nice curved looking contact so i'm gonna use a soft flex so soft flex is a very good tool because it's not very fast cutting and you have more control when you're using it because you'll be using it in slow speeds so yeah once you're done that use a scaler to remove any excess bonding agents and yeah see i'm gonna use an even sharper yellow grid diamond burr to remove any small excesses Okay, this is why using a microscope is a very big advantage. You get to see micro details, which is not a luxury everyone can afford, but it's okay. You can start off with loops and then make your way up to a microscope. Okay, see? Remove any excess, round off everything, so you got this natural, beautiful, untouched look of composite. Then adjusting the triangular fossa see got a very natural looking tooth and definitely go ahead and polish it with red and white if to be honest the polishing makes a load of difference if you don't trust me look at the 15 and 16 in the pictures later that i'll show that was done one and a half year before i think that's what 18 months ago and you can see how well it still looks the composite so that is my tip and tricks for aesthetic restoration do give it a try so this is how it will look like look at the 15 and 16 still looking so good so give it a try let me know how it goes i will see you all in the next video till then take care thank you and bye bye see you